Moving right along, we're going to start doing some body work. These are the fenders we're going to use. Um, this one is pretty good. There's no rot. It's pretty straight. That knockout is already knocked out, but that's okay. That's where the wire comes through for the tail light and the work light. I do have these two holes to fill and a few little dents and creases to work. Um, the fender on the other side, some dents and wrinkles. Again, no rot. I have to fill this hole outright and I have to make this hole look like the knockout is back in it because somebody's knocked it out. It looks like they've probably had an umbrella holder or something on here. So um, we'll make a little piece and tack it in so it looks like a knockout that hasn't been knocked out. Now uh, we need a bumper for this thing. I'd like to put a bumper on it. I, I got a few little accessory doodads I'm going to put on it. so. Um, a bumper was a popular thing back in the day, and back then there was there was two kinds of bumpers you could get. You could go down to the Ford dealer, and they'd sell you one like this. This is a proper original Dearborn front bumper. Um, how you can tell them? They've got the curve in the side arm here, and they're riveted together. Um, now this one here, it's an original Dearborn one, but it's it's pretty banged up. Trusty Rusty here has an aftermarket one on it, but it's nice and straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap them. Um, you would have gotten these anywhere back in the day at TSC or the local, you know, kind of tractor parts place. So it would be no problem for an old tractor like that to have a bumper like this on it. Even though it's not exactly the right, the right thing that you would get from the dealer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this one off, put this one back on Trusty Rusty. And we'll get this one painted up and ready to put on that one. So that's all done. Trusty, lust, trusty Rusty look. <laughs> that's a bit of a tongue twister. Trusty Rusty looks a lot better with a smashed up old bumper that matches the rest of its smashed up old smile. Anyway, um, it's starting to thunder and boom outside. So I got to go put this thing away. And I'll see you in a minute. Well, moving right along here, we finally uh, getting into a little bit of body work. This, this clip is actually about four or five months after the, the, the previous clip on, in this video. But anyway, uh, no time like the present. Like my neighbor Sam says, the best day to plant a tree is yesterday. So hey, we're on it and we're getting there. Um, these fenders are really decent. So I just had a couple of little wangs in them to fix. That That's all fixed up. Um, the hood is over here. It's really, really decent, this hood. And I've got two pairs of dog legs to choose from. That one there, you can tell the front of it's whacked. It's junk. So we've got uh, the yellow one will be good for the left side. The right side, we'll figure out which one of those two is the better one and use it. Um, I'm not expecting too much grief with the bodywork. I I I got the paint at the dealer, and just to try it out, I I shot our Cyclone air cleaner, and I really like it. It is definitely like the right color for these things, so it should look pretty snappy when it's done. Man, I hate bodywork, but I you know muddle my way through it because I'm too cheap to pay somebody to do it. Um, We've got this fender pretty much straight. Now, these fenders weren't too bad at all. They just had a couple of little dings in them. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. As far as working the metal, um, I, I got the dents knocked out as much as I could and then just kind of straightened them out the rest of the way with a little plastic. These fenders are really wavy. Like, if you went to try and, try and block these things, you, you'd go nuts trying to get them straight. But anyway, it's a tractor, right? So uh, that's pretty darn good. And we'll get the other one ready to go. And then we'll be able to get these fenders in primer and go from there. And we started working on the hood. All right, there's the other one fixed up. Um, all the while when I'm sanding on these fenders, I find the nice original all of the gray paint under there. There's no rust or anything. I have no idea why some fool painted this thing silver. 
it makes no sense. These tractors were beautiful, the color that they came. But anyway, it is what it is. So this one's ready, ready for primer now too. Oh, there's a good step. I like to get to this point. Um, I've got the, the, you know, the, the outside of the fenders pretty much straightened out. So before we get too carried away with them, I brushed a nice coat of rust primer on the back side of the fenders. And then um, they'll be ready for paint. I don't get too carried away with the back side of them. You hardly see them at all. I've given our fenders a couple of coats of uh, filler primer. So we'll let that set up for a while and then we can start kind of uh, sanding them back down to where we're happy with them. And we can go ahead and get some color on this stuff. Now we can continue working on the hood. It's pretty decent really. Just a couple of little, little dings in it here and there that, that we fixed up. So this should be ready to go shortly. There's always one or two tiny little flaws you missed, so um, lucky I found them now, so we'll get them nipped in the bud. That fender seems really good, so we're not too worried about it. Um, the hood's coming along nicely. I've just put my last little, my last little bits of filler on it, and we have started working on the hood sides and the grill. Um, now, Neither of these hood sides are original to this tractor. I'll show you what happens to them. These are the original ones from it. And these N-Series tractors are famous for having no brakes. Um, you can always tell when you go to buy one, just look at it. And if the front of it's all smashed up, you don't even have to drive it. You know it's got no brakes because the grill is the brakes. And this one has been no exception. You can see it, it gets all smashed in and then it's not straight anymore. And these things can be really really tough to straighten out because they're made of such uh, heavy thick metal this one isn't really all that bad I probably could have fixed that if I wanted to but we got that other pair from Nick at real guy garage and they're in fantastic shape so we're just going to use them so these ones are from a 9n or a 2n and they're really the same uh, the only difference is this on a 9N or a 2N, the bottom of the grill is held in with a bolt. And on the 8N, there's a, there's a pin there. But it's in exactly the same spot, so we'll just screw in a stud there and, and let, let that be. Um, but they're nice and straight. I've just been starting to just do a little tiny bit of work on them. It just needs the edge of this one needs a little, uh, a little straightening out. And that one there had a dent in the bottom of it, which I fixed. The grill is another story. Um, this tractor didn't even have a grill when I bought it. it. It had been knocked out years ago from it having no brakes. But I bought this one at an auction for 15 bucks. And quite frankly, it's not really that bad. Um, I can buy a brand new one for, uh, gosh, I think they're like $99 or something. But I would rather, rather just have an original Ford grill on this thing. So we're going to see if we can get this grill straightened out. Uh, the center bar is mashed in pretty badly. Some of the teardrop bars are banged up and the bottom of it's really hammered up. So, uh, hey, we've got nothing to lose by trying to fix it, do we? So I'm going to work on that. Well, this is going along quite nicely. Um... I, I can't believe I've gotten it as good as I have in... I've been working on it for a very short time. It's never going to be perfect, but I would rather have um, an original Ford piece on this than, than a repop from, you know, the land of almost fits. So I've got a couple more bars. This one here needs a little tweak. And then I have to keep working on the, on the bottom of it. But it's uh, looking pretty good right now. Our mashed up grill, um, I'm pretty happy with the way it, it, it came out. I've got it mostly straightened out. I think this uh, on this side, a couple of these bars still need a tiny little tweak. But all in all, we're there. So what I've got to do now is drill some holes in it. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the differences in, in some of these grills. Uh, the, the grills on these things, 9 ends, 
the first uh, 39 and 40 had a uh, cast aluminum grill, which were uh, always got broken. And then in 41, they went to a, a tin grill. This is not a 41 grill. Uh, a 41 grill is called a 41 grill because it's unique. It looks just like this, except it doesn't have these vents in the middle. This piece is solid. Then you go to a, a late 41 or 42, which we will call a 2N grill, which I'm pretty sure this is. So, um, although these two grills look very much the same, there are some significant differences. Um, number one, the early 2N grill at the bottom, where it bolts to the, to the dog leg, is, is different. And the top of it is different. Now, it would have had little pins welded in here. I guess they've gotten busted off and replaced with these machine screws. But that's, that's basically how they were held in. And then the, the 8N, they have these, these latches. So you can pivot the grill out, kind of like a single hung window in your house. You can pivot the grill out to clean the radiator. Also, what they did away, um, there would have been a badge here on a 9N or a 2N that said Ferguson System. Um, you could see on the 8N, they did away with that badge after the court battle with Harry Ferguson and, and all that. I'm not going to get into that here. But, um, because this tractor is a very early 8N, it's one of the first 5,000 made, they actually, when they were building the first 8N grills, um, they reused leftover stuff from 9N, or the 2N, that they could use. And the very first batch of 8N tractors actually used this centerpiece from the 2N. And these three holes here, they filled these two with little plugs, and left the center one open. So what we have to do on this 8N grill is we're gonna mimic that. So we have to drill these three holes in it and then we'll, we'll fill those two and leave that one open just like they did. Okay, well, that there is what an early 1948 8N grill would have looked like. Now in the manufacturing process, once they used up all these 2N centerpieces they switched and the 8n ones started coming with the holes blanked off but uh the first few thousand eight ends that's how they came these are a couple of uh brake shoe rivets i just kind of riveted them in there and that's uh, very similar to what they they were doing on the assembly line i brushed a coat of paint onto the inside of the hood uh, they weren't really painted from the factory but it just i don't know kind of cleans things up and I, I got the bottom edges of it. So when I flip it over to paint it, I don't have to worry about getting up under those edges. We'll just, uh, once this dries, we'll kind of feather that in a little bit and, and we'll be good to paint the top side. Well, at least one good thing, I've made it to the end of body filler. We're done with Bondo and sanding. I'm sure I'll still have a little bit to do with, you know, glaze, spot putty. But uh, that's it for the heavy stuff. So now what I'm going to do is these hood sides, I'm going to flip them over. I uh, hit the back side of them with the rust primer. And then uh, I ran out of filler primer in the rattle cans, and they're $25 each. But these are small panels, so I'm just going to brush on a heavy coat of rust primer. And then we'll wet sand it down to a, a suitable surface for painting. Well, they turned out pretty nicely. That, that's very nice how they turned out, in fact. Um, I'll let this primer get good and hard for a day or two and then I'll uh, wet sand it down so we've got a nice surface for our finished color. We're getting close now. Um, I'm at the stage now where I'm wet sanding the, the parts just to get the, the final uh, little imperfections out of them. Uh, what we use, um, it's a tractor, not a million dollar show car. so. One of these rubber sanding blocks with some 400 wet or dry takes it down nice. If I was working on a car, I would have a, a stick, uh, a piece of one by two hardwood about, you know, eight to 12 inches long with the sandpaper wrapped around it and you block the car with that and that'll get it nice and straight. Um, so uh, I've got the fenders ready to we've just you know you bust through in a few places so we'll just spray some gray primer over that and then just touch it with 320 dry sandpaper before we put the color on now i'm working on the the hood sides 
They need a little tiny bit more, but we're gaining on it. So we're ready to ready to shoot this thing. I've got my, my crappy little touch-up gun there. I've ran some, just some acetone through it to make sure it, it works and it works. So um, we've got our painter's measuring stick here. So it's just got some graduations on it and you use those graduations to calculate your mixture. This particular paint is four parts paint and they want you to thin it with one part acetone. So I put a piece of tape on it just to make it a little more clear to see. We'll decant some paint from the can into here, then we'll top it up with acetone. Then we can get it stirred up and start uh, shooting it. Oh, before we shoot it, we have to get a tack rag and just and tack rag all these parts just to make sure we've gotten all the dust off of them. So now we've got our reduced paint in here ready to go in the gun. Uh, we're going to put it through this filter. Now, I had to, this filter is made for a big gun, I guess, so I had to tape up some of it, but uh, that'll be fine. So we'll fill up our gun, and then we'll practice a little bit on this piece of cardboard to get the gun set up, and then we'll uh, have a bla blast at painting our fenders. I'm going to paint the fenders first because I'm not quite sure how far my paint is going to go. I didn't have a ton left. But um, the fenders are the most important part because i got to get them on first and get all the lights and everything uh, installed on them. So we'll do the fenders first and then uh, hopefully that will work out and then we'll do the, the, the front sheet metal. Oh, there we are. I'm not very good at painting. I probably should have chosen a different gun. That's a little touch-up gun. I shouldn't have really been using it for big stuff like this. And on top of that, it's a piece of crap. The, <laughs> the controls are, are somewhat lacking on. But, hey, our stuff is painted. Um, uh, if I have to, I can kind of do a little bit of a cut and polish job on this. Um, but, well, we'll see what it looks like once it's good and dry and hard. It's, it's just an old tractor. I'm just going to tow my trailer up to the scrap metal yard and put around on it. So, um, it looks not too bad anyway. Well, I guess that'll do it for now. Uh, if anything, in this video, I reaffirm the fact that I'm a lousy body man and a lousier painter. Eh, <laughs> uh, I... Uh, Equipment is a big part of it, and I had a crappy gun, but not knowing what it was doing wrong or how I could make it work better, it's just a lack of experience on my part, uh, which is probably why I usually paint tractors with a nice a nice brush. I have no problem with a, a good-looking brush coat of paint on a tractor. It's a tractor, but I wanted to try my hand at spraying this one. Anyway, it's sprayed, whatever. I'm going to leave this stuff to get hard overnight, and then uh, I guess tomorrow we'll start putting her together. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. And until then, so long.